Hi, if you're a fan of Golang, then your options are pretty limited in the embedded world. So here's a couple of options for you with a working bare metal example written entirely in Go. Hi, this video is sponsored by JLC PCB, who not only make all my PCBs, but thousands of PCBs a day for other customers. And unlike JLC PCB Man, who seems to have vanished into thin air, they produce some quality PCBs with a very fast turnaround time. You can currently pick up 10 PCBs for only $2 with a $20 coupon off shipping for your first order. Pretty good stuff. Golang all started back in 2009 by a bunch of Google employees. According to Google, Go is an open source programming language that makes it easy to build simple, reliable and efficient software. It was designed to address a lot of the issues with current languages while keeping the best parts. Similar to Java and C++, it's a language that statically types. It also reduces unnecessary boilerplate code like Python or Ruby and doesn't require an IDE to function but supports them functionally. It was designed with code sharing and reusability in mind, so it is very open source friendly. It's also a language that is scalable, so whatever is written for a high-end server can also run on a small MCU. It's this last bit that interests me. Writing code once and have it work across all platforms is a bit of a holy grail. As you'll find out, you can write Go code for an MCU, but there are limitations. Go is really designed for SOC based targets, not an MCU, something with a bit of code space and RAM. Go can call C APIs, but there is a core cost every time. This can be as great as 200 nanoseconds in some cases. Garbage collection within Go still pauses the world, so it will affect real time applications greatly. Task prioritization is not a concept Go understands and hardware GPIO control is intentionally cumbersome. There are workarounds, but expect your code to be more verbose. So for non-real-time applications, you could potentially write Go for an MCU. I was originally going to provide more details about Golang here, but the best place to learn about Go is on the Golang Tour website. If you really want me to go into Golang more, then leave a comment below. So currently we have two options for Go in the embedded world either using a Golang based framework or bare metal programming of a device. For frameworks there's Embed and Gobot. Embed is something that hasn't seen much work done on it in the last year. It's an almost complete framework supporting only a handful of SBCs, so isn't the best one out there. However the best Golang based framework for IoT is Gobot. There's a couple of good examples of what you can do with it. One of my patrons, Daniel Choate, is creating a robotic lawnmower using OpenCV and Nindoff IMUs. There's also GoPyGo from Dexter Industries, which is a DIY robot built around Golang and supported by Gobot. Gobot currently has support for 35 platforms ranging from BeagleBones, Raspberry Pis, OpenCV, down to ESP8266s and Arduinos. The device support, such as sensors, isn't as mature, but adding devices is pretty easy, since the framework uses Go. However, for MCU platforms such as the Arduino, you don't write in Go for the MCU, but burn the firm ATA firmware to your device, which can be accessed from your Go code running on, for example, a Raspberry Pi. If you really want to program in Go for your MCU, then the only other viable option is using MGo written by Michael Dirkes, or however you say his name. This doesn't compile Go code directly to Assembler, but rather transpiles or converts Go to C, and then compiles that to Assembler. While this seems to be a roundabout way of doing things, it actually makes it very clean. You can write all your code in Go targeting MCUs, and benefit from Go's extensibility. So adding support for new MCUs and devices is fairly easy. However, there are a couple of downsides to using MGo. The best way to show you is to run through a simple blinky LED example written in Go. First of all, you'll need a programmer. I used an ST-Link version 2 for this. Although you can also use a Blackmagic probe as well. I also used an STM32F103 based board from IT, which is a Maple clone. You can use almost any STM32 based MCU as most of them are supported by MGo. 
For this, of course, I'll need the JTAG header soldered up and connected up to the ST-Link programmer. Apply juice to both the ST-Link and Maple clone. And two LEDs should be enough for this. Now I'm assuming that you already have Linux installed and Golang all set up. Golang is available either from your OS repo or from the Golang website. So installing is fairly basic and I'll skip over that. However, you should end up with a Go source directory like this at the end of it. Next you'll need to install MGo. Also make sure you have the GCC ARM cross compiler installed. Then you'll need to add in some environment variables to your shell profile. The GCC build chain binaries and a couple of other variables. These two are the important ones and need to match your STM32 MCU target. If you are using SWD instead of JTAG then you can also fetch the ITM split go code which allows you to see the SWD debug messages. Next, fetch the demo archive from my website. You should end up with a bunch of files like this. The script.ld file controls key elements of the resulting MCU firmware image. You have stack size, definitions, and max tasks, which are one of the shortcomings of MGO. You'll have to define the number of tasks running and also stack sizes here. There's also several include files that need to match your target MCU. Next, the burn.sh script will compile the demo code and burn it to the target device. Then there's main.go, which contains a very simple LED flashy code. Two LEDs are defined, GPIO 7 and 8 on port A. Then the PLL is set to reference the internal 8 MHz oscillator. With a PLL divider set to 1, and a system clock of 74 MHz and a SysTick wake up timer set to 2 milliseconds. Enable clock enables the clock for the GPIO port A. Then define a default GPIO configuration which is an output and apply this config to the two LED pins. Then loop forever just toggling the pins waiting for 500 milliseconds in between. Running the EGC binary, you can see that the small example takes up almost 11 kilobytes of flash. That's actually a huge amount just for flashing two LEDs. The equivalent assembler can be written in a hundredth of that. But remember, we are coding up in Go designed to be able to run on high-end servers and also small SPCs. So now we can burn that straight to the maple board. And there you go two flashing LEDs written entirely in Golang. To see what MGO is doing under the hood, you can see the transpiled output. Two files are generated. Even though it's a little difficult to follow, it is quite human readable standard C, which is good. This is important when it comes to debugging, as you'll need to see exactly where you're up to in your Go code. Contained within the demo files on my website, there's also a bootloader reverter script so that you can go back to the default firmware if you need to. The Go example is pretty simple, but this is what it looks like in the Arduino IDE. As you can see, there's slightly more setup code you have to apply in Go, but Michelle has done a pretty good job of making it simple. To be honest, I much prefer the Golang way. Now I was going to show you how to connect up an ILI9341 LCD screen to the STM32 and display graphics using entirely Go code but unfortunately I suspect I buggered my display and it wasn't functioning, even with Adafruit's Arduino code. So that will be something for another video. So Golang is a pretty versatile language and my money is on it gaining traction in the maker scene as it's a lot more extensible and predictable than other languages like Python. However, it has a lot of catching up to do with languages like Rust for low-end MCUs. If you like this video, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe while you're there. Why not? 
You can also support me further on Patreon or PayPal and join the bunch of really cool patrons I have supporting me there. So, thanks for watching and see you next time.